This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 3, this is Section 1, Part 3. Time, Space and Personhood, Part 3 of 6. If a mind believes in the reality of the ego, it believes in a false cause. Or we could say, cause with a little c. It must be that that mind is holding on to the belief in the false now. It must be that the mind is holding on to the belief in that false cause now. Do not project this fear to time, for time is not the enemy that you perceive. Do not project the error. The old cliché about time healing all wounds is not true. Time does not heal wounds. Metaphorically, you could say the Holy Spirit's use of time heals all wounds. But even that you have to see as just a metaphor. Because the awareness that brings the release is that there is no linear time. There is only now. There is only the holy instant. Friend, time is not in the healing. Time is in the sickness as it were. David, the belief in linear time is the sickness. Does everyone have an understanding of what the world hypothetical means? Friend, ah, no. (laughs) David, every thought you hold in your mind right now is hypothetical. Friend, Even the thought that we are gathered here this morning for a teaching-learning session is hypothetical? David Yes, you shared a thought about needing to leave this session at noon. That is hypothetical. You said that you are off on Wednesday next week. That is hypothetical. We have talked about looking for a job. That is hypothetical. Anything that you think you have done, experiences that seem to have happened in the past, those are hypothetical as well. Friend, is it the relationship to time that makes it hypothetical? David, the hypothetical is the whole projected world as well as the belief in linear time. Friend, Anything I could talk about or have talked about or think I can talk about is hypothetical? Because what is there to talk about if there is no time, no space, no images, no form? How do you talk about that? David, go for the experience. Often, as we go deeper into the ideas, we hear, But, 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 David... What if you were at such and such a city at night? And what if a man came up with you, to you with a knife and said such and such? Hypotheticals. The mind wants to come with, come up with a lot of hypotheticals. It believes in an objective world. Friend. But that is no more hypothetical than an experience that you seemed to have actually had. David, right. Friend, I cannot get that. I do not understand. David, what we are coming to is that now is all there is. Friend, and now is free of images and form completely? David, when we say now, the present moment, Do not think you know 
what that is. We have heard these phrases for a long time. Live in the moment. Be totally present. The deceived mind does not have a clue. Friend, now. Now does not mean just now? The five of us sitting here? David, right. Now is unknown to the deceived mind. But in the ultimate sense, now is all that can be known because, friend, that is all there is? David, the Course says that there are no bodies in the holy instant. At no single instant does the body exist at all. Text, chapter 18, section 7. That is a direct line from the I need do nothing section. <laughs> Very interesting. At no single instant does the body exist at all. That is what makes this seeming perception hypothetical. Hypothetical is the belief that cause and effect are apart or that there is a gap between cause and effect. Everything in this world is part of a fixed delusional system made up of distorted cause and effect relationships. At the beginning of psychotherapy, purpose, process and practice, there is reference to the idea that a stepping stone for coming to the holy instant is to see that all perception, perceptions that seem to be occurring in linear time are actually simultaneous. Another way of saying that everything within the cosmos is simultaneous is ideas leave not their source. Text chapter 26, section 7. There is no gap. There is no space in between events. There is no span of minutes or seconds or days or months or years that separate events because... Ideas leave not their source. All events are of the wrong mind. There is no gap. Like what we just read. Time and space are one illusion, which takes different forms. If it has been projected beyond your mind, you think of it as time. The nearer it is brought to where it is, the more you think of it in terms of space. Text chapter 26, section 8 Time and space are just this little gap in between cause and effect. But the Course is telling you, and I am telling you, there is no gap between cause and effect. And if there is no gap between time and space... There is no personhood. Friend, because that is where personhood is? In the gap? David, the gap that isn't. Friend, that isn't? Well, it seems to be. <laughs> David, that is the subject-object split. Friend, I feel like I am running to catch up here. Can you say that in another way? David, it can be said in many ways. The subject-object split that we talked about can only be equated with that gap. No matter how you come at it, you have just to see the impossibility of that gap. The whole teaching of the Course is that there is no gap between cause and effect. There is no such thing as linear time. Friend, but by hanging on to linear time and personhood, I hold on to the gap. It is like I am struggling to hold cause and effect apart. David, the whole point of mysticism is to come to see that cause and effect are not apart and there are no logistics to handle. 
everything that seems to be done in the world is perceived within the basic assumption that cause and effect are separate. That you have to do certain things to have other things happen. If I apply for non-profit status, fill out all the forms and continue to be persistent, then non-profit status will be granted. Cause and effect. If I plant some seeds in fertile soil in the sun and water them, the seeds will grow. The teachings of the Course are saying this is ludicrous. The world of images is a projection of unreal effects that are coming from an unreal cause. Think about the motion picture projector analogy for a moment. There is a projector and there is film going through it. The film would be the false cause and the images that are seen on the screen of the movie theater would be the effects. If the film is an unreal cause, then the images are an unreal effect. But when you watch a movie, from a deceived point of view, it seems as if it is real. The mind identifies with the images. It feels startled or happy or sad because it believes in these false cause and effect relationships. It really believes that people do things to other people. Like in science, for every action there is a reaction. The mind really believes in the reality of that idea. That is why it can seem disorienting when going deeply like this. The world as one has known it does not seem to be as it was. Things are not as they appear to be in the world. We will continue with the next part, that is part 4 of section 1 of chapter 3 of book 3 of Unwind Your Mind Back to God in tomorrow's episode.